God, Gurney, come out. Your people are suffering. There's no need for that. You can hear some more shuffling about. Don't you know? <laughs> well, I, uh, <clears throat> he seems to uh, have. Um, he seems to be sort of sweating profusely, uh, looking about, sh uh, shifting. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> well, you see, at, uh, come out at, here uh, so we can see you. <clears throat> Up to the fire, please. Into the fire. Expectingly. Does he have a weapon with him? Yes. Oh. Is it drawn? He has a weapon up. He's holding it somewhat shakingly, you know, in your direction. <laughs> there you go, man. I gotta keep the fire between <laughs> So, Lord Gurney, we have liberated you from the dwarves. Just giving me a honeyed smile. Well, liberated. Well, uh, I, uh, I, I don't, don't know. Don't worry. Me. Their influence will no longer have a. They will no longer put the dwarven yoke of, of work upon your people. We have taken care of it. They're all dead. Oh, the well. traitors are dead with them, of course. So you need not worry about traitors' forces. <laughs> well, well isn't, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Well, uh, traitors, you should always watch for traitors, don't you know? Yes, uh, quite. <laughs> he looks around, you know, holding his sword up still. Uh, sweat is beating all over his <laughs> his forehead. Quite a man's forehead. Yes, good, good. Uh, well, uh, then the uh, business is concluded. Uh, yes, quite. I, uh, thank you. A uh, good day. He waves a ma magnanimous hand. Wait, wait, wait. Is this really a way to greet the victors who saved you? He looks a bit offended. Is this all the thanks we get? Uh, well, I... Uh, what about a ceremony? What about reward? I, uh, I, I, am, I am not sure. It's, we have lost much. I mean, the armory burned and uh, there's been some other sabotage. And, uh, a small thing, then. Um, you know, I like pretty things. And then she pointed at his weapon and says, That, can I have that? Uh, that uh, is all the reward I will ask for. Throw it over here, and uh, we can leave. Uh, well, I, uh... Is that around. too much to ask for? Uh, really, for all we have done, for all the blood our people have shed in defense of yours? Sort of looks out at the din of battle outside. Well, it seems like people are dying on my side quite a lot. So I, uh... but yes. The traitors, of course, as you say, said yourself. I've. Now, oh, my lord Gurney, there is no need for any more violence here. You know that the traitors and the dwarves have been defeated. Is there I've... really a question for what to do now? Well. Uh... Looks around and, well, you, you promise to leave if I give you my sword? But I promise. Oh, okay. He uh, throws the sword uh, to the ground next to Rain. Rain takes it, adds it to his belt. Uh, she nods and says, uh, all right, I think uh, I'm done here then. Uh, brothers, uh, I suppose you will take care of the rest. Okay, but I'll just leave then. Oh yeah, because you're a sister. Lord Gurney looks very perplexed. And that would be his choice for there, there should be no question for what you're supposed to do next, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Do not worry. Awesome. These gnomes behind, behind them, do they have weapons? No. Good. But Gurney, are you armored right now? <laughs> he, does have a, he does have an armor on, yes. Sad. We'll deal with this. Do I even have to say what I'm going to do? 
Well, I think I it's do. evident that we slaughter everyone in here, right? <laughs> you certainly can. Um, I, I don't think I, slaughter everyone here so much as uh, reappropriating them. <laughs> Oh, you want to have your... Is this is this something really Nate will talk up about now, so that his plan can be fulfilled? Oh, absolutely. Lord Do Gearney need... should not die ignominiously here within the palace. Most certainly not. That, that, oh, you want to capture him? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of you know, and it would be rather rude if you know su such a man of his his grace and stature were to just die in a boring fashion. Right, well, take him then. Uh, obviously, you know, he deserves to be treated justly as a prisoner of war, and, uh, we will, you know, do things. <laughs> uh, do things. It, involving smothering him in spider webbing and attaching him to, like, a, a large mushroom pole or something. We attach him to the cave ceiling. No. Well, we'll be fine. After a uh, a minor tumult, you can certainly subdue Lord Gurney and uh, whatever guards that you know those two that that is back there. They don't really offer much resistance without weapon and armor. Ah, <sighs> well, <laughs> feels good to be Victor. <laughs> do this more often. Wasn't that easy? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're we out there, and the gnomes are like, "We won! We defeated them!" <laughs> <laughs> God oh, damn it! <laughs> well, here's a new army. <laughs> In the tragedy, Lord Gary died, but before he did, he entrusted us with the, <laughs> the key. To the <laughs> well, that seems to check out. He <laughs> would do that as long as, long as really it says it. it was an idiot. Pull out a blue token <laughs> with this token. Here's a yeah. gesture of friendship and bond. <laughs> Could be shit. Hmm. I am too derailed yes. and scatterbrained to talk seriously so right now. So we uh, yeah. we we subdue Lord Gurney. That's right. Yes. And we bring the dwarf as well, I think. So 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 what do we like walk back outside to as we are emerging from the uh, the hall of the lord? Well, uh, when you walk out, you uh, you are greeted uh, by a you know more quiet town than when you actually entered. It seems like the battle is dying down quite a bit. Uh, you see, uh, you know, coming up uh, over the Lord's Rise and up to you guys is once again uh, Sergeant Charland. Uh, he is wounded, but he is you know still still alive and kicking, as it were. He has some uh, some of his patrol with him, and uh, he seems to be looking for something. And oh, guys, he's... guys, here, here's where it happens. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. As in and rain, can you go in front? Uh, sorry to interrupt, Jonas. It was just we know what's happening. <laughs> hmm. Um. He uh, he uh, sees right. sees you and uh, quickly approaches. I call the hellbeast forward. Sheep is sleeping, I guess. I I I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Oh. Over here. Darkness. Oh yeah, you know, pointing at something that I can't see is very helpful. Scroll out and you'd see it. Yes, I I'm seeing it now. I'm I'm here. God damn it! I move here. Yes. Thank you. Sakari, step one step forward. Yeah. Good Hellbeast. Abyss, please. Oh, please. All right, he, uh, he approaches you, sees that you seem to be somewhat unharmed. He sees the, the bundle of Lord Gurney in the back. And uh, then he, uh, you know, he stops and he salutes. My lords, the battle is won, I think. You think? You know, yes, uh, we have some minor resistances to root out, but overall, all has been destroyed. That's good. Good. What are your orders? Gather up anyone who, any prisoners that might potentially be, and uh, and um, well. Send a few to the outskirts of the city. We don't want anyone running away and alerting uh, far, far off places. 
and uh, generally secure the bridges and the city and make sure that uh, no descents can uh, can form anywhere. And in time, and every living gnome should be rounded up and gathered in the town square. I believe there are words we wish to share with them. Words and actions. Sergeant nods. Also, uh, if you see our two uh, Skizral friends, do send them here. He salutes. To us. As you say, it will be done. The uh, people will be rounded up in the square. You have done excellent work, Sergeant. Uh, he nods. Thank you, my lord. I live to serve. He uh, then salutes again and uh, turns around and hurries off to find uh, the ones you requested. Like to serve? What kind of drow is he? Yeah, then we'll turn around. Uh, yes, I wanted to mention that before. It seems a bit too convenient, don't you, don't you think? Why is what it does? too convenient? He's trying to protect his own skin, the same as any drow. Well, I would assume that the dear Baroness does have some sort of plan in place. Should we succeed, which we did, I'm thinking spies are a definite possibility, maybe even assassins. Of course. And I would say someone who tries to get close to us would be the first one we should suspect. What, what do we know about him anyways? Uh, nothing much. We have seen about and the garrison. He seems to be uh, one of the only actual soldiers we have been given. Most likely of low stature. Never served in any real kind of conflict. Um, but however, all we know is from his own uh, mouth and own words only. Exactly. We should trust no one, as always. Maybe it would be possible to find out more about him through some means. Speaking to the other soldiers, not undoubtedly. Perhaps. For now, should we uh, prepare for our uh, our speech in the town square, brother? I believe you uh, had some uh, some things in mind. Really, it just sort of like stretches and cracks his back. Yes, I believe it would be unfitting if. Lord Gurney were to suffer his end away from his people, I think it necessary for those who have now come under us to witness he who would have doomed them all one last time, and perhaps make them a little complicit in his fate. As a matter of fact, I think... Sort of like it. Uh, he's really, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, his entire family would know that of, you know, he has uh, some ex experience, in, you know, in torturing people. And uh, as I did put on the character sheet, he really likes to hurt dwarves and gnomes. Really. Like, it's just like rolling around. As a matter of fact, I would think it rather rude if, say, no, not rude, appropriate if, say, we held all of the Zvirf Neblin dead hostage and only allowed the living to bury the fallen within the mushroom fields if just one of them would have the courage to, pulling out a dagger, plunge this into the chest of Lord Gurney. Oh, and there he smiles. <clears throat> Grins, even. Of course, if none of them wish to bury their dead and continue the traditions of their people, well... That is understandable. Lamentable, even. <clears throat> that old fool was not well liked, as far as I understood. There should be plenty who will be angry with him for bringing us upon them. Indeed, as well as making sure, as I think they already knew, that were it not for the dwarves' immense anger, and itchy fingers on their crossbows. Maybe bloodshed did not have to come. <laughs> yes, I believe you shall speak in my stead for this. You are good with words. 
Nice. I am not exactly wishing to give a grand speech, but I think at least a little bit of flash to make them all complicit and burden them with this inescapable guilt would be wonderful. And the dwarf? He, before he is sent to his god, I believe it best to break his spirit and inform him of just how gravely he failed. I'm looking to have some... And then it kind of, the emotion even escapes the, uh, the mask. Quality time with him. <laughs> oh, there you he is very attached to Dammerhall, and I do think that by spreading lies within his ear and convincing him that if he had just defeated us, he would have found his way to his lost city, that everything would have been great for him. But he'll never, he'll ever know what wonders would have awaited in his life. Yes, that sounds appropriate. Just make sure that he doesn't escape. No, I think the spiders can very readily assist in tying bonds not even he can break. Yes, I'm sure they would enjoy uh, enjoy uh, the spectacle as well. Oh. That's the idea. No, 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 no grand speech in that front. I just, you know, you know, I'll take the dwarf myself. And <laughs> Obviously, Lord yeah. Gearney needs to uh, be shown off to the people. Now, with the gnomes, I would think we we bring all their uh, weapons and such. We gather them up and take them to the Hall of the Lord and, uh, and keep them there. Not to allow anyone to uh, have any sorts of uh, weapons or armor. I agree with this. <sighs> any sort of looting, do you think that will be necessary? Money for the soldiers? There's not much to spend it on, however. Well, then shakes his head. They can appropriate themselves of whatever funds they can find. However, it's not as if they're going to have any trade caravan pass by willing to trade with them in some time. Nevertheless, they are simple folk and as such are guided by simple means. He knows, yes. We can always see what what is in this uh, this city's treasury, and uh, well, it is not as useful as hands. Right now, uh, material wealth in that way has very little to us. There's simply no way to make it into anything useful. Indeed. I shall see to having the throne of this place expanded upon. <laughs> You like that, by the way, Tina? Quality time. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded funny. <laughs> mm. uh, kind of like an, a switch in personality. The uh, that's the point, I think. The um, uh, spiders approach. They climb up the lord's um, lord's rise and sort of approach you from the edge. Turns and smiles and looks at them. This, the spider, you know, shifts from leg to legs and looks around and it's sort of shifty, jerking way. And then it uh, feasts uh, its beady and glowing red eyes upon uh, Larry. Matron! Did you like the feast we have prepared for you? Is this not all and more than we promised? It is a fine harvest. The spider clicks its mandibles. There are no need for the dwarfs for the rest of the city. You can gather them all in, and uh, we will find an appropriate place for you to uh, to lair while we are staying here. Excellent, matron. Indeed, and you deserve as much, for you did not lie with tales of your excellent combat prowess. The uh, spider collects his mandibles together. We are trained in hunting, my lords. That is what we do best. Confusion and terror makes things easier to catch. 
Mm. And the adrenaline. Ah, the sweet adrenaline. Sort of salivates thinking of it. Yes. Miller smiles. Not so and says, yes. Yes, you have, uh, you have earned your feast. Uh, I would uh, I would like you to uh, to keep close. The people of this dear fair city should uh, get to see you, all your might. As you wish, matron. We can lair quite. Mm, she sort of you know, moves moves a mandible to sort of show you guess. Uh, quite spectacularly, give us a tall building, and we will enshrine it to the honor of the spider people, yes. Is there any sort of tall buildings around? Mm, not really, I mean... So, does the gallery of the gods constitute, or maybe perhaps a constant... Yeah, I kind of the, thought, the, like, the Lord the rise, that perhaps. into, like, full of, yeah. um, like, spider corpse eating yeah. things. The, these, uh, gallery of the gods, these, like... Of colorful like, rainbow, rainbow spires would certainly make for a very flashy spider-ness. And it's not like they need history or culture anymore here in Faster Mode, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that seems like... That was my first thought as well, actually. And they're yeah. close to the Lord's Hall and everything. Sort of a big... You know, you can all over the city, you can look up and see the, the symbol of, uh, of the town. <laughs> the big spider nest. With uh, dwarven bodies like stuck, yeah, hanging down. We'll, we'll purvey this to uh, suggest it to Skithic and say we we uh, considered, and she gestures to the many sort of colored rocks that this might be a great show place for your nest. Spider, you know, looks or uh, takes a look around and then um, says, "Yes, that would be excellent. I think so many." Spires and stalagmites to spin the webs of our people. Yes, we will make it into a fitting edifice to your honor, matron. And that is good. And gather as many dwarves as you can find there and um, keep them living or dead as you would like. And as for your spinning, really will gesture towards, like, you know, like the gathered, uh, like Lord Gearney and, like, the dwarf. These two are not for you, not yet. I would ask you to spin your webs around them so that they can create, you create bonds by which they cannot break. They will be used as educational tools. Spider shifts about as you wish, my lord. Sort of you know, moves over, <laughs> takes a uh, takes a speculative spec speculative. Yes, thank you. Look mm -hmm. at the uh, at a dwarf here, and sort of moves about and you know reaches out a leg and pokes it. And uh, then uh, you know, basically, starts the spinning webs ar around the uh, the dwarf. Well, Asrak moves over here and does, does the same for Lord Gurney. I think it's who, I think it's I think it's a shame that Lord Gurney is not awake for this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it uh, it takes a little while, but uh, soon they are well, sort of entangled in the spider web there's no way they can actually move about without breaking free and breaking free seems to be quite tough all right you know have like their heads free it would be a shame yep Good. little 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 swaddles little bundles of joy yes i have Indeed. fantasized about this for the past 10 days <laughs> <laughs> uh, lurid imaginations no doubt all right they, uh, they turn around. The work is done! And sort of looks, uh, looks up at the gallered gods and then uh, turns to town. We shall be gathering the offerings. Hmm. No, I, I think they're most certainly given free leave to do so. Yep. 
Especially since Mana Guy's gone. <laughs> Run <laughs> before Elinary commands you. Now, Arthan might not wake up for a few days, but you know that's okay. Lord Garney will just pour some water on him. <sighs> we'll get him up. Mm. Slap him a bit. Tell him about candy. That'll be sure to wake him up. <laughs> well, candy. Yep. I'm sure it's where he keeps it. I'll, I'll use Dante much right next to his face. It'd be like smelling salts, only like wave candy from his uh, his castle <laughs> in front of his head. Oh, my favorite candy. Oh, I had this most horrific nightmare. I dreamed that. <laughs> Oh, my people were torn with fighting and bloodshed and chaos as dwarves and drow and gnomes and just all found each other and deeply pressured me to try to do anything and make a decision and all I wanted to do was hide and eat candy. Oh, what, what is this? Where am I? <laughs> and the candy was gone! Do you understand? Gone! We, like, break his heart. Just, like, throw yeah. all the candy into the river. <laughs> no! <laughs> just dies with a broken heart. Yeah. <laughs> just the stress, yeah. Breaks his heart and it dies. Yeah. I don't think I could be serious without Manic. <laughs> He's the only thing keeping me together. Uh, yes, it is dangerous. Yeah. I, I am, I am I sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me today. I am just... I guess hyper. You know. It's energetic Grimoth is so rare, right? It's even scarier than non-energetic Grimoth. No. Been on a sugar high all morning, damn it. Mm. Well, uh, the the gathering up of the populace uh, seems to be going quite well while you, you know, stand here and... Of course, you know, admire and, like, pay attention and sort of, like, talk amongst ourselves, you know... Maybe, like, try to point out, make sure we remind each other to keep an eye out on people, because, you know, there, there's got to be some sort of fail-safe catch. Whatever it <laughs> is. There's a fail-safe. Well, Mary will just make sure to look queenly and majestic. Okay. Oh, well, you know, you need to look queenly for a reason, I think. You know... <clears throat> So, does she do anything special to look queenly and majestic? <clears throat> Normal swarf niblin. Uh, well, I mean, she she does what she can. She stands tall and let them bask in her glory. Making mm. sure that the uh, symbol of Agaris is very visible mm. uh, around her neck. Yes, after a uh, after a few hours of rounding up and you know stamping out and some light looting. Light looting is fine. My character will, uh, you know, of course, take the time to just. He's not exactly looking for walking around right now. You know, obviously, he's incredibly receptive, keeping his eye out. I think he's sort of, like, flitting in between, like, paying attention to his surroundings and, like, daydreaming about how awesome his next few weeks are going to be. <laughs> hmm. This is, like, such an amazing catch. This is the best day ever. I haven't <laughs> had this much fun since Dorisia. Exactly. Dear Diary, there was a good day. Best uh, of all, right. no, no one asked about anything. This is great. They all think it was Drislin. Sweet. Exactly. Well, obviously. Must have been. Because the brother couldn't be a spellcaster. Oh, that's preposterous. He would know. He wouldn't keep something like that from us. Exactly. Well, the uh, the sergeant does approach after a few hours, as I said. Salutes again. My lords, we have gathered the... Um, Peasants. Well, I know not. And, uh, and looks to uh, to Rilland. Dear brother, I believe it is time for your uh, for your message on our behalf. Rilland nods. 
Uh, You'll speak for us, House Ritheria. That's right. We, we had to make sure during the few hours that Lord Gernie, you know, like, the swaddle of web was, like, t attached, like, some sort of, like, maybe there's, like, an obelisk or, like, some sort of, like, raised, like, dais area within the town square that, like, the web could just be, like, stuck onto that. Sure. Cool. So that he could be all prominent. Yep. He, he hangs at the forefront, as it were. Fantastic. Great. Raised area. Cool. Well, unfortunately, I didn't. I thought about getting the spell that made my voice project better, but uh, I guess I'll just have to use acoustics here. Hmm. The uh, when you walk out into the square, you see the the gathered gnomes before you. Uh, several hundred of them. Many of them seems to be, you know, some of them are clearly hurt or have been hurt in the fighting. Uh, I mean, the the heaps of bodies. Have per, per your instruction, instruction, I believe, been piled up like on the Lord's Rise, or at least you know behind the, behind you, basically like you're you know standing behind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, behind far you. off in the distance, the 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 Skisrol are like piecing together this yep. web of dwarves. Yep. <laughs> they, the Skisrol are, are working, uh, converting their treasured history and monument to a den of horror and evil. Uh. Um, well, and will certainly have made uh, the uh, the um, the dancing lights of the drow, and she'll have made them so that uh, they're behind the skisral crawling around their webs, so that the hmm. the shadows are projected um, sure. onto buildings and stuff down here. So you can sure. see that the spiders crawl around, shadow spiders everywhere. Mm, 